Welcome to the concise presentation of the fiqh. This is episode 83. Today we're covering food part one. It's the 27th of Hijjah, 1445 after the Hijrah. And the date is Wednesday, the 3rd of July, 2024. Those who are following us in the book, we're on page 535. No. Food, foods refer to what humans consume and get nourished by of staple foods and other types of food. The basic ruling concerning foods is that they are permissible. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Ala alihi wa sahbihi mawala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, kulu mima fil abdi halalam tayyiba. O people, eat whatever is on the earth halal and tayyib. That is everything which is on the earth, whether it is in the sea or outside the sea, is to be halal except what the sharia had specified to be haram. So if you have met an animal which is being slaughtered according to the sharia or a bird has been hunted or a fish which has been taken away from the sea. If we don't have to go and search, is the shark halal? Is cheetah is halal? Is no. Because whatever is haram is being set. And the other species is to be halal. So the, most of the items are halal, but some of it is to be haram. There are some certain animals and some certain categories that would define what type of animal is to be haram. Same thing with the plants. The plants that you find is to be halal. We cannot find, she said, to be haram, as, except if it is to be said that this plant is haram. Okay. Now, when we talk about food here, we're talking about most of it is the animals. And as for the food in terms of plant-wise, Again, we say everything is halal except what the Sharia said otherwise. Can anybody name for me a particular plant that is haram for you to eat? Butter. Think. I dare you, you're going to come with a name. And that's as well for the people who are online. If you want to go and join us, you're welcome. Anybody would like to tell me? Anything that you think and you believe, a plant, bubble. well done. So there is no such a plant in particular. He said, whatever harms you. So if that plant proves to be fatal, if you eat it, then it's haram. But if <clears throat> it is not fatal, and actually it could be used with small quantities in the right method to cure and there's no problem. Cocaine. Who said it's cocaine haram? Morphine. You give morphine, don't you? To the patients. Mm -hmm. Who said it's haram? It's only haram if it is used for the wrong purpose. Poison. Who said it's haram? Unless it is being used to harm. But some of the poison used to be with antidote. Snake poison. Kind of like I'm talking about the plant, I'm not talking about the animals yet. Plants on the earth. So what there is no such thing in the Sharia like banana haram, kiwi haram, kiwi halal, banana halal. There's no such thing. Whatever proves to be harmful. I'll tell you what I could make from the kiwi haram. If I talk about well, one ton of kiwi one go, I'll kill myself. So, but that doesn't mean kiwi is haram. Okay, same thing here with the cocaine. If I took the cocaine to get drugged, it's not going to kill me, going to get drugged, it's haram. But to get drugged from the pain, that's different. Because I want there's a pain there, I want to be not feeling the pain. It's a painkiller, no problem. Let's go now to what Allah says as well. Bakuru wa sharabu wa la tusrifu. Innahu la yuhibbul musrifin. Qul. حرم زينة الله التي أخرج لعباده والطيبات من الرزق طبعا 
eat and drink, but waste not by extravagance. Certainly he, Allah, likes not those who waste by extravagance. Say, O Muhammad, وسلم, who has forbidden the adoration with clothes given by Allah, which he has produced for his slaves, and the good and lawful foods. Allah. No food is forbidden except for what Allah has forbidden in his book or upon the tongue of his messenger. To forbid something that Allah has not forbidden is to forge a lie against Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ فَجَعَلْتُمْ مِنْهُ حَرَامًا وَحَلَالًا قُلْ أَاللَّهُ أَرِنَ لَكُمْ أَمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَفْتَرُونَ وَمَا ظَنُّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Say, O oh Muhammad وسلم, to these polytheists, tell me what provision Allah has sent down to you, and you have made of it lawful and unlawful. Say, O oh Muhammad, has Allah permitted you to do so, or do you invent a lie against Allah? And what think those who invent lies against Allah on the of resurrection? Truly, Allah is full of bounty to mankind, but most of them are ungrateful. And the oath, the translate translated actually the rest of the ayah, in Allah la fadlin ala nas wa la kinna aktharahum la ashkuru, which is not mentioned in the book, by the way. <clears throat> Let me just see a book in Arabic. I uh, mentioned the whole ayah, the Arabic, but in the Arabic of mine, it doesn't. Also, Allah Jalla said, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبِ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ مَتَاعٌ قَلِيلٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Translation of which? And say not concerning that which your tongues put forth falsely. This is lawful and this is forbidden. Not for us to invent lies against Allah. Verily, those who invent lies against Allah will never prosper. A passing brief enjoyment will be theirs, but they will have a painful torment. That is a very little of enjoyment, but later on, because you take it haram, you're going to be having the torture and the and the punishment. What is now unlawful from the food? Now, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ رَسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا مَا قُرِيرْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ." And why should you not eat of that meat on which Allah's name has been pronounced? That is at the time of slaughtering the animal. While He has explained to you in detail what is forbidden to you, except under compulsion or of necessity. So He says He detailed for you. What is being haram upon you? He detailed Allah Azza wa Jal. وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِلَّا مَا قُرِبْتُمْ إِلَيْهِ Let's go ahead. So Allah? Allah has made sufficiently clear and detailed what is forbidden for us to eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالْدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرُ وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ وَالْمُنْخَنِقَ وَالْمَوْقُوذَ وَالْمُتَرَدِّيَ وَالنَّطِيحَ Forbidden to you for food are carrion, blood. Carrion means dead animal, which is not slaughtered. Now. Blood, the flesh of swine, and the meat of that which has been slaughtered as a sacrifice for others than Allah, or has been slaughtered for idols, or on which Allah's name has not been mentioned while slaughtering, and that which has been killed by strangling, or by a violent blow, or by a headlong fall. Or by the goring of horns, and that which has been partly eaten by a wild animal, unless you are able to slaughter it before its death, and that which is sacrificed on altars. Forbidden also is to use arrows seeking luck or decision, all that is disobedience of Allah and is sin. Also, Allah did he said, Wa ta'kuru mimma lam Allah alayhi wa innahu lafisq. Eat not of that meat on which Allah's name has not been pronounced at the time of slaughtering of the animal. Well, surely it is a sin and disobedience of Allah. Welcome. And in another verse, Allah SWT said, Right. Also, Allah said, قُلْ لَا أَجِدُ فِي مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ مُحَرَّمًا عَلَى طَاعِمٍ يَطْعَمُهُ إِلَّا يَكُنَ مَيْتَةً أَوْ دَمًا مَسْفُوحًا أَوْ لَحْمَ خِنْزِيرٍ فَإِنَّهُ رِجْسٍ أَوْ فِسْقًا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ Say, O oh Muhammad, I find not in that which has been inspired to me anything forbidden to be eaten by one who wishes to eat it, unless it be carrion, the dead animal, or blood poured forth by slaughtering or the like, or the flesh of swine, for that surely is impure or impious, 
unlawful meat of an animal which is slaughtered as a sacrifice for others than Allah. Allah said, so he said, وَحُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَرِّ مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرُوَّا Forbidden is the pursuit of land gain as long as you are in a state of pilgrimage. Right. So from this, we need to know what are the reasons of tahrim? Why we have something which is haram from the food? Why does Allah Azza wa make everything halal from the pigs and the swines and all of the dead animals and why? Okay. Reason number one, because Allah knows that what is harmful to our body <clears throat> And what is harmful to our intellect. So from the reasons of prohibition is that there is harm in those animals or those food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to be haram. Number two is the <coughs> this type of food, it might also make the person in his intellect not sound, which is drugging. Okay, a uh, person who's mean like intoxication, I should say, maybe intoxication, all right. Um, thirdly, also filth. Some of these things are being, uh, uh, being prohibited because of najasa. They are impure, like the pig, the swine. Also, some of those animals or some of those creatures that have been made haram because of that your instinct would not accept to digest, except that instinct of yours has been polluted. We say in Arabic, Your instinct is which is not polluted, it will not eat such a thing, like eating a poo. Okay. So if your instinct made you to eat the poo, that means there's something wrong with you. It's called this is istiqdar. So whatever is the poo or to drink urine, I mean, this is doesn't you don't need to have a Quran or Sunnah to tell you. It's something you can't. And I'm, of course, medically speaking, it's harmful. Very harmful. Um, uh, eating lice, for example. You know, the lice or animals. Okay. Uh, or moth, for example. Uh, some moth you fry it and barbecue it, for example. That's as well. This is, um, number five, which is we don't have, that's the, the reason number five why it's haram. We don't have the religious permission for such food to be eaten. Like, for example, it is being stolen. So it becomes haram. Stolen banana, <laughs> stolen kiwi. Why? Because it's been gained in an unreligious way. And also here, you had mentioned in the last ayah, uh, ayah first, وَحُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَرِّ مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرُمَا حُرُمَا means a state of ihram. You're not allowed to eat what you have hunted through state of ihram. Hunted state of Ahram. This is inshallah, we're going to be deluding with it, but let's just uh, I mean, shed light upon it. So, this person is in a state of Ahram, whether it's in Hajj or Umrah. He is not allowed to hunt animals. Okay? He's not allowed to hunt animals. He's not allowed even to slaughter a hunted animal, not to eat from it. Or to eat even from a hunted animal, not by himself, by somebody else, but for him. Or he had aided to hunt that animal. So like they say, a rabbit, wild rabbit, and you told that person, well, you said to Haram, hunt that for me. That's Haram. Or you just pointed to him, get that rabbit. You just pointed like this without even saying. That means you have aided for that animal to be hunted. It's Haram upon you, not upon the person who was not a state of Haram. But if it's been hunted to somebody else for the sake of somebody else, and he had invited you to eat from this halal, so it's only haram when you are a state of ihram to hunt or to aid to hunt or to tell somebody to hunt, to give a gesture to somebody to hunt, or it's been hunted for you, so that person hunted it without you knowing, but I hunted it for the sake of you, to entertain you as a guest. You can't eat from that. So Allah he said, وَأَنْتُمْ حُرُمًا حُرُمًا means the state of Ihram. You are not مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرُمًا وَحُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَرْ مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرُمًا You can't eat that. Now, as for fishing, no problem for the person who is in state of Ihram. Fishing is not hunting. And also, it's no problem that he to slaughter animals which are not a hunt, like he slaughtered his hadith. 
You know what's hadi? When you go into the state of ihram and hajj, it's totally hadi. Hadi means the sacrificial. Not the udhiyah, different. But you could slaughter the udhiyah as well. You could slaughter chicken, no problem. It's not a hunt. Nobody hunting chicken. Chicken, you, you know, get them. You don't hunt them. Okay? So um, this tahrim or prohibition is only designated and specified for hunting. And this is with the consensus of all the school of thoughts. There's no difference among the scholars regarding this issue. So have we have mentioned, alhamdulillah, five reasons. So am I allowed to eat food which has been confiscated with it without due right? No. You served. You served. Been taken away by somebody without any due right. Haram to eat it. Stolen food, haram to be eaten. So this Sharia did not give us permission to eat. طيب now. Now we kind of come to ما يلحق بالميتة. فضل. What is included as carrion? Included in the prohibition of carrion is any part of an animal that is cut off from the animal while while it is still alive. Abu Waqid al Layfi al Layfi narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, "What is cut off of an animal while it is living is considered carrion." Right. So if you have a sheep and you have cut the leg of the sheep while it's alive, that leg is haram to be eaten. Okay? But if you have slaughtered the sheep and then you cut the sheep into pieces, everything in that sheep becomes halal. There is something here maybe you've never heard of, which is, let's say the sheep of yours had produced, the female sheep, produced a baby sheep. And with that sheep comes some placenta. That placenta is haram to be eaten, okay? But if you have slaughtered that sheep, that whatever is inside it is halal, including that unborn small sheep which is in the womb. Do you understand that? So if you have slaughtered the mother and inside it, whatever is inside it, placenta, even the sheep which has not been born, the situation was pregnant, okay? And that sheep came, was dead for very least. Slaughtering the mother is like slaughtering the what? The fetus, whatever you call it. The, the, the cup, you call it? What do you call it? Some of the sheep in English. You don't. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, what do you call it? What do you call it? The cub? Could the cubs in the, what do you call it? The son of the sheep. I don't know. Anyway, so whatever you find in the sheep, but if you the sheep had, she's alive. And she gave birth, and with that birth comes other than that child. That whatever comes is not allowed to be eaten. And if that cup of hers came dead, you can't eat it because it became dead, and that sheep is still alive, the mother. But if you slaughtered the sheep and the sheep died, whatever is inside is halal. Whatever, regardless of what is inside it, everything. I'm not going to go into details. Even the, the, the ones who go like Hanafi mother, they go, the sperm which is inside the male sheep which stays there is halal. Just say everything. You, you've never thought about this. Even, yes, it's halal. So as long as you slaughter the sheep, everything is it in halal in it, inside it. Even the intestines that got the poo, take the poo out, clean it, and eat it. And some people, they don't, you know, it's very nice food, some other people that find it. You've been stopped. Have you ever heard about our mother they used to stuff these things? My mother used to stuff it. She said, don't throw the thing, the intestines. Yes, your mother as well. Yeah. I've eaten it after it's been clean, cleaned and all of that. Nice. You don't, you don't, there's no smell of the poo. Everything's nice. They put in it rice, they stuff it with lots of things. Can I ask you, my dear boys, to come forward? Teach the children to stay forward. We are not in a club. We are in a masjid. Do not come forward. You know what, this is, I don't understand what, well, I, my breath is not really stinky. Come here, Sheikh, come here. SubhanAllah. You want to learn, a successful person comes forward, Ikhwani. Wallahi. Come forward, always. Scattered like this from the shaitan. Taib. So we understood, alhamdulillah. Now, what is the dead animals? Now, we're going to go with more than that. Which is Ex what is ex no. exceptions to the law of carrion and blood. No. Ibn Umar radiallahu an anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah, Allah, Allah said two types of carrion and two types of blood. 
have been made permissible for you. As for the two types of carrion, they are fish and locust. As for the two types of blood, they are the liver and the spleen. Right. So here, we have to have the sunnah with the Quran to understand what is halal haram. It's not correct to say, if when I say something halal or haram, I just look into the Quran. If I don't find, I'll go to the sunnah. That's wrong. Has to be together. Because if you went into the Quran in itself without the sunnah, you'll end up not eating fish. Fish is haram because it's dead. Nobody slaughters fish. The fish comes out from the sea, it dies, and then you eat it. True or not? There's no such thing, let's just go and slaughter the fish. No. But Allah says, Dead animals are to be haram. If you stuck to that Quran without the sunnah, you'll end up not eating fish. You'll end up not eating locusts. I know that you're not going to eat a locust, but the fish will you'll eat it. Locust is a small insect, or maybe it's bigger, as big as this. And it's a vegetarian. It goes on to the grains and okay, the wheat. They love them. And barley. They come to the fields and you know, shaves it off. Harvest. Shaves it off. And that's why when it comes with lots of swarms, then the country will declare emergency to go and fight them. Because as I said, they harvest everything. They kill the whole, you know, produce. The whole crop will be finished. So they bring planes to go and find them, subhanAllah. So those ones, if you find them dead, in any way, dead by the insect killers, by knocked itself with the ground, by doing whatever, if you find it dead, as long as it not stinks, because anything stinks, even the fish. If the fish was dead, and it was floating on top of the river or the sea, and it's been there for days, and there's a smell coming out of it, it's not halal for you to eat it. Listen, it has to be what? Fresh. So what makes it fresh or not fresh? The smell. So even if it's still in the sea, but it's dead on top of the sea, there's some fish that they do that, you can't eat that fish. So I eat it halal. Listen to this as well. If you have taken the fish living and you threw it in the cooking pan, a frying pan, while it is moving about, and then it died while you're cooking, it's haram to eat it. Okay, it has to die first, and then you start cooking. And there are some restaurants, which are the posh ones, they will tell you which fish that you want, the fish tank, and then from that, especially the Chinese, Okay, the, from that fish tank, it jumps onto the frying pan, and that fish is being what tortured while they're cooking it. It has to die first, and then you start frying it. There are some people eat all sorts of things. Same thing with that blood. Blood here, blood is haram. To drink the blood of an animal which has been even slaughtered halal, you can't. But the kebid, which is the liver, is a clot, blood clot it is. And also the spleen, Allah made it halal. So now the ayah becomes like this. حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَ إِلَّا السَّمَكُ وَالْجَرَانِ وَالْدَّمُ إِلَّا الْكَبِدُ وَالْطِحَانِ This is the ayah it becomes. They don't read it like this, but this is how the rule of the ayah. Prohibition is upon you, the dead animal, except, who says except? The sun. So except the fish, whatever is in the sea, and also, where, which is the locust. And the blood, except the liver and the spleen. Okay? Now we come in the Tahrim al-Humr al ahli the, pro the prohibition of consuming donkeys. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu narrated that a man came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, donkeys have been eaten. Another came and said, the donkeys have been eaten. Another came and said, the donkeys have perished. They finished. They finished the donkeys. Wow. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, then told a caller to announce the people, Verily, Allah and his Messenger have forbidden you from donkey meat, as it is a filth. So then the cooking pots were overturned while they were boiling with the donkey meat. Right. We're not allowed to use the domestic donkeys. You know, the red ones. We're not allowed to use them except for riding and for loading stuff. We can't le use them, for example, for food. And you can't use the milk of the female donkey as milk. 
I'm saying this, you think that some people drink it? No, there is. The rafidah, they say this is better even than the milk of the cow. They say if you drink that milk, you know, something you know, good happens here. That's why their brains are gone, you know, I think because of drinking that such milk. Uh, so the, the, for them, until atan, they call it, the, the female of the donkey. If you drink that milk, you pull su superhero, according to them. No wonder why they're superheroes. <laughs> Allah al-Musta. So we don't eat, drink from that. Now, he said domestic because there are wild donkeys. From the wild donkeys, there's two types I could think of. Zebra. It's halal. And from the wild donkeys, which are the one which is not the red, the one which is you find them not with the families, with the people. They are in the wild. They are living in the wild. Those are halal. Okay, so these donkeys are halal. Now, this prohibition came at the time of a battle called, or the Ghazwa, called Ghazwa Khaybar. Uh, at the beginning, they were eating this, but the Prophet has been told by the revelation that it is filth, not just no good. Now we're coming to another criterion by which we make things halal and haram, and that is? The prohibition of consuming fanged beasts of prey and birds with talons. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa forbade every fanged beast of prey and every bird with talons. Talents, you know, like the falcon, like the vultures, like the eagles, okay? Talents. Has the chicken got talents? Yeah. It's got three things there at the bottom. So if it's not, if it is not flying, it's not talents. Is that what you think? But it's still could close. So what is the criterion then? No. What's the criterion to distinguish between, like, you know, you, you've got the ostrich. Oh, it's a big, massive, three clothes for it. It will kill you with it. Criterion is this animal, does it hunt with a talent? Okay. So the animal hunts with those talents, like the eagle vultures, it's haram. If that animal does not, the bird does not ease, use the talents for it. And so the chicken is, uses the beak. It doesn't use it for hunting. Okay? So that's what it is. So that's how we distinguish. So after this now, we're going to put some uh, rules for prohibition. Those rules are very important. Because if I ask, you know, something like, is the crab, you know the crab, the sea crab? Halal or haram? Think before your answer. Okay? We're going to go with a bit... Maybe a stronger question here. Is the bee halal or not to eat? Okay, so we want to understand what is the criteria of halal or haram? Is the mere cat halal or haram? Okay. Is the crocodile halal or haram? I want to understand. Oh, yes. We'll be amazed now. I'll give you the answers. Uh, is, for example, the hyena halal or haram? You know the hyena? Is the monkey halal haram to eat? Is the elephant halal haram to eat? Cheetah halal haram to eat? I'm going to give you another one, which is the snail. You know the snail? Sm slowest animal on the face of the earth. <laughs> Isn't it? The snail, the snail, this one is the snail, yeah? It's got like a, a shell on top of it. These Algerians, they eat them. <laughs> He's looking at me. <laughs> The, they eat them, the snails. Yeah, some of them, part of Africa, they eat them. Hippo, halal or haram. You know the hippo? Let's go. Those things, halal or haram. We have to understand. So he said here, the fangs, like the snakes. And also, the fangs could be as well the tusks. Yes. Any animal, just like the talent, uses his fangs or tusks Okay, for killing and hunting, haram to eat. But if he doesn't, so we were going to be thinking about things, by the way. This is, we're talk, talking about the land, the land animal, not the what? The sea animal. Totally different criteria there. Mm -hmm. Land animals. We're going to talk about the turtle. You know the turtle? 
There's a big massive turtle. It's called the sea turtle and the land turtle. Halal haram. Yes. So all of this has not been discussed. So just let's give some rules here regarding what is halal haram. The prohibited animals as follows. Number one is every animal which had died without slaughtering, like the munkhaniqa, the one he says in the Quran, and mawkudha, mawkhaniqa means being suffocated, died by suffocation, died by hitting by a, a stick, al the, the ayah says, which is the one had fallen from the mountain, and natiha, an animal knocked another animal, and also the one who's been eaten by a beast, okay? So all of those animals which have been killed, uh, sorry, they've been dead, they were dead without being slaughtered or without being hunted, because the hunting is not slaughtering, you know, you shoot up with a gun or an arrow, okay? That is to be haram. Number two, the blood, which is the one running blood, is haram. Is to eat except what has been left in the veins. So that means when you slaughter the sheep, not every single drop of the blood is going to come out, is it? So you're going to eat some of the. So you could sometimes, when you, I don't know if you slaughtered an animal, you've seen it, you'll come out with, for example, let's say the uh, pipe, the windpipe, still got, and the lungs, still got some blood linking to it. That blood is halal. No problem. It's a little one because it's going to be cooked by the fire. Talking about the, the gushing blood, which is haram. Thirdly, the swine and everything in the pig is haram because it's got two harms, body and also spiritual. You are what you eat. Basically, if you eat a pig, then you become like that. So you are what you eat. It's got, subhanAllah. Also, from haram issues as well, whatever is mentioned upon it other than the names of Allah. So if you heard a Muslim saying in the name of Rifai, Haram. If you heard a Christian, you've heard him saying the name of Jesus. Or a Jewish in the name of Uzair. Or the name of any person, other than Allah. Okay? Or a non-Muslim. Non-Muslim regardless, even if he says by Allah. It's not halal. So who is his exception here? Allah made an exception for the Christians and the Jews. We don't know what they have said. It's halal. As long as they slaughter, ikhwani. Not to, for example, suffocate. Like some of the chicken now, they're being gassed. They gas them. 80, more than 80% of the chicken in this country, except for the halal ones. HMC and HFA. Those are the ones which are halal. But the other one, chicken, don't eat because it could be gassed. Eight, more than 80%, the report says. They're not stunned. Stunned is different. Stun is like they bring a battery, electrical, when they put it in the chicken. The chicken's still alive when they slaughter, but now they're gassed. They have been dead. So you can't eat them even if somebody must have said, Sir, Bismillah, because they're dead. So you can't eat them. So the Christian or the Jews, Allah permitted for us to eat their slaughtering. Their slaughtering. Okay? Not killing without slaughtering, even if they stun the animal, because the stunning of the animal does not kill it completely. As long as we don't hear the name, is what? Saying, Bismillah. You're going to ask me, is this, is this applicable in England? We're not a Christian country. No, it's a Christian country. Even most of the people are not Christian. America's, you find people are sticking to the religion more than here. But still, it's a, called a Christian country. The head of the country as well. And the Queen was the bishop. You know, the, the Queen is the head of the church. Okay, so we've got Christmas. We've got Easter. It's a Christian country, regardless. Is most of the people are agnostic, or the people you mean most of the people are agnostic or are atheists, or, but still a Christian country. You go by the majority. <coughs> so any animal which is slaughtered by them, even if it's been stunned by the electric, and I've been to the apertoires and I've seen it, and I've seen the, how they they stun the animal. I was inside, I was dressed like them, and I was just looking at what they were doing, and I filmed as well inside. And I saw how they stun the animal. And I let one of the animals, don't touch him. After they stun, I want to see that is he still alive or not. He's still moving. So after it's been, it's like a, a pair of pliers, big one. They put it on the head of the sheep. And, and this is electrical. And makes the sheep like numb. Why? So it doesn't move while he's slaughtering. Okay. Now, this is wrong or right beside the point. They're saying halal or haram. 
Okay, so when they do this, the electrical shock, what happened is that they believe that the sheep will not be hard, it will not be, it's going to be less harmful on him when you slaughter him. But we believe this is the wrong way because we might as well harm him when we put the electrical top of him as well. The other issue as well is that the blood of an, a, a, a stunned animal, when it's been slaughtered, it does not come out with the power as if you slaughter it when it's still in its full power. When the animal's been slaughtered in Islamic, it's like a chamsi, they do it, so the blood gushes out with power. Whereas the other one, it's like a tap, you open it slowly. So that's why the difference in the taste of the meat, subhanAllah. That blood stays for a long time in the sheep and it comes out. Whereas the other one, the heart's still pumping. Boom, boom. So the, the blood, blood they go split like this. Another one, I've got a video on this myself to, to show that this is how the blood. And I let him to leave the animal for more than a minute, two minutes, just to see if it's still alive or dead. He said, I had to slaughter. So I said, no, no, I want to see. I want to see. Still alive or not. And he's still alive. The animal's still alive. As long as he's moving, still alive. Okay. So that's coming back now. Um, anything which is not mentioned, Allah's name on it, is haram. haram. Uh, so anything which is mentioned, if you mention other than Allah's name, is haram, regardless who had said it. And anything which has been slaughtered by the non-Muslim other than the Christians and the Jews. Christians and Jews is halal from them. طيب. Now, also, so we got the number four and five here. If you didn't know, as I said, the Christian and the Jews, you didn't know what they said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you heard them not saying nothing. As for the cheese, Yahwan, it's no problem. The cheese, even if it's from the Hindus or the, the cheese uh, from the animal, they call it the, the renet. No problem. No problem. Number five is what is being slaughtered in the name of Allah, but for other than Allah. What does that mean? Those people used to, to slaughter their altars, to their statues, to their gods. They say, in the name of Allah, Bismillah, they give it to the altars. You're not allowed to eat from it. Is this still exist? Yes. Some people slaughter for the monarchs and the kings. Not for them to eat, they're just in front of them. What is the sign for this? And I've seen it when such and such country, I'm not going to say the country, and that president passed by. Those people, or the Bedouins, they can be already. They were slaughtering as soon as he passes with the car and they're letting it. Slaughtering the camel, for example, camel it was. Slaughtering the camel and they're letting to what? To, to the, the, the monarch, the, it was the president he was, the president. He's passing by just to see them and they let it go. So they let it, and they don't eat it, but just, just, just to show them that we are loyal. So they said in the name of Allah, but this is not slaughtered for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the, of the president. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, number six, the domestic animal, donkeys, as we said. By the way, horses, it's halal. Yeah, I mean, horses, we don't really have them for food because we wanted to have them for riding. And, <laughs> but it's halal. There are some areas in the Muslim areas, they eat horses like Kazakhstan, in the southern part of Russia. They love horses. I was invited to a horse meal. I said, thank you very much. No thanks. But I somebody went there and said, I want to taste it. So he went to taste it. And he said, you can't compare it with a lamb. Because they don't have the fat. The fat is the bet makes it nice. The fat makes the meat nice. SubhanAllah. So he said, dry meat. Has anybody had eaten deer meat? No? Deer meat. They sell it. Deer meat. The deer meal is, well, I, when I was a kid, lamb al ghazal, best deer meal. It's not actually the best one, is the lamb. The deer meal, again, you'll find that the fat is separate from the meat. You know, the meat of the lamb is the, the meat with the fat. This one is just like a layer of a fat separate from the meat. So it's a red meat, they call it. And I'm, it doesn't really taste as much as nice as the. Number seven, every animal from the beast that has. Fangs. Canines, that's a better word as well. Canines. Okay, canines. Like the lions, like the meerkats, like the elephant, because they hunt with it. The elephant, like the cheetah, like the dog, like the tiger, 
like the monkey, like the cat. You know, the Chinese people eat cats as well. Like the, as I said, right. Now, all of these prohibited animals, they are prohibited to sell and buy for the sake of eating. But for the sake of other than the eating, no problem. So you could sell a domestic donkey because of the ride, but not for a person who wants to eat it. Okay. You could sell, as I said, uh, uh, like for example, other animals for the sake of not the purpose which is being prohibited for. So the dog, if it's a hunting dog, you could sell it. It's a dog, which is a police dog, is very expensive. It's been trained for a long, long time. You could sell it. But just dog for a dog? No, it's not allowed. Even to be eaten, of course, it's not allowed. Um, number eight, every bird which has the talent. The ones who are, like we said, hunts with the talent. As for the rooster, not the rooster, the cockerel, deek, um, the uh, pigeons, uh, birds, and everything that does not hunt with the talents, then it is halal. Number nine, what the Sharia commanded us to kill. You're not allowed to eat. Such as the mice. We are commanded to eat, you know, kill the mice. The mice, the scorpion, the crow, the uh, the ra dogs with rabies. The dogs in general. Uh, the What's it called? It? Gecko, the gecko, gecko, so gecko. You know the gecko, the small little lizard, the gecko, uh, the snake, al hudayya a bird, especially. I don't know what is it, this bird. The hadith says that those things you kill, and if you kill, that means you can't eat. So, for example, the gecko, if you kill it from the first instant, hundred hasana. If you don't kill it from the first time, second time, ninety-nine goes down. Yeah, hasana. This is Bukhari's hadith. So according to the first time, and by the way, you have to hit it on the head, right on the head, in order to what? To kill it, subhanAllah. This is the animal which had been throwing fire onto Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we commanded to kill it, that's why we're not allowed to eat it. Snake, and also, as I said, the crow, and the, so you see the crow, he, he does not got talent, but he's been prohibited because of this. And the mice, and the also, the scorpion. Number 10, what the Sharia forbade us from killing. So the opposite now. It's haram to eat. What he forbade us to eat, to kill, he forbade us to kill the following, the ant. So we're not allowed to eat the ants. Because he forbade us to kill it. You only kill the ants if it's harmful. Or you don't go to ant nests and start spraying things and kill it. You're not allowed to do that. So if you invaded your house, I mean, a human being invading your house, you'll start fighting him. So no problem to find an ant which is invading your house to put something to clear the ants from your house. You kill them as well. But ants which is outside, in the field, nothing to do with you. You're not allowed to kill it for the sake of killing. So you're not allowed to eat it. The, the bees, the hoopoo. You know what's the hoopoo? It's like a, a, a parrot. It's the one which is the one who had taken the news for Sulaiman, the hoopoo. Huh? You know, the hoopoo. If you, just, if you don't know it, Sheikh Google will help you with that. Just say hoopoo and come up with the with the drone. Can you have got a phone? Okay, good. Mr. Hoopoo, let's just see here. Right. Hoopoo bird. Well, they don't. The hoopoo bird. Ah. That's the one. Okay. Let's just get one, one of them. Subhanallah. Nice. It's not a woodpucker. No. I say hoopo. See? H O O P O E. That's the hoopo. This is the one, the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam, carrying the news. We're not allowed to kill him because he was what? I believe I used to. So we're not allowed to kill it, we're not allowed to eat it. A frog. The frog is a, you could call him a, a water animal, isn't it? So here, it's when a water animal is being prohibited. We're not allowed to kill it. And you know which country they love there. Which one? 
French France. French for them, the frog legs, I love it. <laughs> okay. Uh, number 11, the last one. Everything that you are able to capture it, but you can't slaughter it, then you're not allowed to eat it. Like worms. You can capture them, but can you slaughter them? You can't, because there's no neck, there's nothing. So you can't eat them. The worms and everything that's crawling into the earth, little little insects, little insects and flies and all of that, not allowed to eat. All of them, save what? The locust. SubhanAllah. The locust, halal. So let's just now talk about the following question. Is the hyena halal or haram? You know, the strongest joke amongst the animals is the hyena, the ones on the land, not on the sea in the sea, maybe the, the crocodile. But the Hyena is got the, the, the jaw that can crush and crumble stones, subhanAllah. Because he goes to the bones, it's a scavenger. After the animals, they leave, they leave and he goes to the bones and crush them. More than a dog. <laughs> hyena is halal. It's a hunt. The Prophet prohibited hunting it when you are in the city of the haram, like other animals as well. So it's halal. I haven't eaten it myself. I would have wished to listen to someone who had eaten hyena, but I haven't yet. Did you? Yeah, well, the Baba. But he's, by the way, he's got sets of teeth, but he hasn't got something like coming out like the cat. You see the cat? He's still coming out. That's number one. Number two, Baba has been Hadith. Hadith Jabir, radiallahu anhu. Hadith is Sayyid al Bukhari, Sayyid Muslim. It is to be halal. That's why I mentioned the hyena. Snails. And we cannot make it haram. There's no thing that makes it haram except that we are able to capture it. Okay? We're able to capture it, but we can't what? We can't slaughter it. Now, this Sikhwani, this principle is also is in question. This last one which I mentioned. And could it be entered in this, or is it under the whatever your instinct does not desire? Remember that when you said about the poo and the urine? Is it under that or the order of this? And do the Arab instinct, tabia, is a measurement to say that whatever Arabs they don't like, which was haram, they define it's filth? No, because the Arab themselves they differ. Prophet said he couldn't eat something that other had eaten it, and he said, no problem. It's called a dub. A dub is a small lizard, it's a big. Gecko. It's not a gecko, but it's a big one, massive. It's a mi I call it a mini crocodile. Okay, and he's got these legs, and, and he is living, he lives in the desert. Most of his food is vegetarian food, no. Okay. And I have seen it being cut and being cooked into the pan. <laughs> I don't think you're going to eat it if you look at it while it's being cooked. So let me just show you something now. I have seen it in my in our freezer, Allah. I went to Qatar. That's where we used to live. My brother, you know, they, they, they're in Qatar. They, they hunt them. They hunt the bump. So I went just in the freezer. I eat some ice cream. I put them, open the freezer like this. And that little mini crocodile, as much as big like this, he was there, frozen. And I took it really the thick uh, tail of it. Allah. And my brother never stops to send me these. <laughs> Let me show you. He sent it to me just recently. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you guys. These are pieces of dub being cooked. Look at them moving. Can you see them moving? They've been cut all of it, but still moving. Everybody, you see, look. But for them, this is nice food. I know a person who's like you. He, says, mm -hmm. he went to Saudi Arabia as a friend. 
and he, he doesn't he will never eat it but he was invited and he was they're putting the rice the meat and everything and he was eating and he was enjoying it until he reached the middle and in the middle one of those things which is like the tail this is called, called in arabic ukra <laughs> well what's this this is to me being even bum now his mind polluted the taste isn't it subhanallah but he was eating no problem nothing okay and by the way they sell them there in saudi arabia and, and the gulf countries and they are after them they're really like a hunt and they don't come every season that's how to go a special season for them so if i just show you here khwani and this is what comes now last long they don't have going to finish this is going to be showing you i've got a full file about them <laughs> Right, so let me show you. This is stuffed. Can you see that? Stuffed, and they are cooked in this way. <laughs> I wish I could put it on the screen. <laughs> look, look, this is our mom. I'm going to show you how. Look, look how many they are underneath. Look, they are like a farm of them. Farm of them, and they got now. Look, look at the app. What is coming? He's coming. Look, he's like a pet. Look at how big he is. He wants the the, the shade. It's really hot. Look, look at these. Subhanallah, how big he is. He's coming to the shade. Hot. Subhanallah. And they give him food, a drink. Some of the day, like he's, look, this guy, he's feeding his. Look, he's giving him. Look, he's coming. He's calling him to eat. Look. Subhanallah. <laughs> he's trying to climb on his door for to eat. It's like a nice pet. But, and look at them. You see? Look, they are selling it. The kids are selling it. They've been hunting and selling it. Prophet <laughs> did not eat this. He was about to eat food, and the shape of the bub is not there in front of him. So Maimuna, anha, his wife, she was watching, and Khalid, radiallahu anha, was related to her. Is there and eating the prophet. So she said from the back, Aren't you going to tell what the prophet is about to eat? He said, Messenger of Allah. He can't find, figure out. He said, This is the meat of Bob. He pulled his hand away from this. Like he just said, He did. He pulled away like this. So Khalid, he said, Is it haram, Messenger of Allah? He said, No, but we don't find it from in our you know, neighborhood. It's not our type of food. So he pulled the plate, Khalid radiallahu anhu, and he started eating while the Prophet of Allah is watching. I'm saying, it's like he's saying, how can you eat this? I'm just saying, he's, like, he's watching him, how can he eat? So because he, he, he having got used to it. So these people got, you know, they live in a land which they adapted this. They love it. And as I said to you, a friend of mine who is not from that land, he went there, he'd been invited, and he's, would if you tell him, this is Bob, he will never touch it, even approach it. But he's been eating from it until he saw that little take came out from the middle. The mind of his, he said, but oh. before he was Allah, he didn't feel anything. I was eating it. I have to go now. And inshallah, I'll continue. Be in Allah next week. Jazakumullah khairan wa salam. And prepare yourself for another animal. Crocodile is, Crocodile. Crocodile is your homework for next week. Okay, it's your homework. What is halal or haram? Exactly. Remember, crocodile, he lives where? Where it comes out as well, we call it barma'iyat. They live in both sides, land and sea. sea. No. Exactly. No.